Hi, it's Leo Mahoney again. We're going to look at something a little new today that's on my Secudo rig. I've shown you the rig before. Uh, we have a Secudo EVF electronic viewfinder. Uh, we have the Tascam TR60D uh, four channel recorder. And what's new is we have the Rode SMV-X, Stereo Video Microphone X, new from Rode. So this is the back of the microphone. You can see that it sits on the Canon hot shoe very well. It's an all aluminum body on this mic. So nope, there's uh, really no plastic. The, the mounts, the tightener, the chassis, it's all... Uh, lightweight aluminum very rugged so this is the mic here without the uh, windsock on it and you can see that it's got two relatively large diaphragm matched capsules uh, on an XY pattern to, uh, for stereo sound the mic comes with two uh, the mic comes with two windscreens this windscreen is affectionately known as the Death Star and what it is is it's a foam it's a foam uh, windsock with a honeycomb pattern on it and this also acts as a windscreen so if you're using this mic in absolutely a controlled environment you don't need the windsocks but if you're using any if you have any kind of air conditioner noise or any rumbling anything else in the audio track, then at the very least you want to put the pop screen on in the smaller windscreen uh, of the two. So Rode calls this a dead Ewok. And if anybody remembers Star Trek with William Shatner, there was an episode called The Tribbles, and this looks exactly like a Tribble. It's, uh, oh, maybe eight inches, across, eight inches round, and it's very soft. So I call it The Tribble. But it's an amazing windsock. I go onto Rhodes' website. They have a couple examples on how well this uh, this windsock really muffles the noise. They have the mic mounted on the back of a sports car, and uh, they have only this uh, windsock on, and it's remarkable how it deadens out the uh, the wind. The mic has three physical outputs. It uses a TA3, or also known as a mini XLR connector. So it has a right-left XLR out, which is a TA3 connector, which are just these short, small uh, XLR cables. And from there, the, uh, the right and the left XLR go into your recorder. Another output that the microphone has is a mini, uh, a mini jack stereo. And that plugs into the bottom of the mic and you can use the mini jack in tandem with the XLR connectors. So if uh, what I do is I use the mini jack direct to the camera if I'm not using uh, my, my external recorder. But if I am using the external recorder, I would probably go uh, mini out to channels three and four on the Tascam and then use my other two XL, XLR connectors to phantom power my shotguns. These mini to XLR cables uh, weren't all that easy to find. You need a uh, female TA3 to a male XLR. So I finally, uh, Rode is going to start selling these cables direct, but I bought, these are made by Soundcraft and I got them on B&H. Uh, they're 18 inch cables. So here on my Tascam I'm using uh, all four inputs. I have the mini XLR right left going into channels three and four which is a single mini connector. Then I have the two XLRs going to channels one and two. So I'm using, technically I'm tying up four channels. On this Manfrotto 504 HD head it has a really nice, uh, it has a really nice feature. On, the, on each side of the head uh, there's a, a utility screw port so you can attach an Israeli or a magic arm directly to the head and so in this case that's exactly what I'm doing I'm using this magic arm I have it screwed right into the Manfrotto head and from there I just lock it down and I attach my Tascam to it 
so what I really like, uh, what again, what I really like about the setup is now I have my Tascam mounted directly to the tripod head, and it uh, it causes no stress points on the cables during a pan or a tilt. I also use uh, bongo ties. I'm a big fan of bongo ties, and I use them to uh, just help strap down the cable so you can't tug at the. Uh, that gives you a stress release on the uh, on the connectors. This is something new to my rig, and it's uh, it's made by Zacuto. It's meant to uh, attach to the Zacuto uh, Gorilla plate, and what it is, it's an HDMI lock. And Zacuto's not original with this. A lot of people make these locks, and they make them for a specific pur purpose. The HDMI port into the camera is not a very rugged port. And if you stress that port out by tugging on the XLR connector, see how it, it's loose here, like a loose tooth? Well, over time, you can damage the port to the camera. And what I've read online is that's a $1,000 to a $1,500 repair if you damage the Canon's HDMI port. So what manufacturers have done, is they've, they've come up with these locks for the HDMI cables so they can't tug on the connector uh, on the camera. So this is made by Zacuto. This cable is made by Zacuto. So the lock is meant to really fit snugly on the collar of the Zacuto cable. So once you connect it here, just tighten it down. And now there's no stress at all. When, when I give the ca uh, cable stress, there's no tugging at all on the connector. It let, locks it right out. The reason I bought this uh, Zacuto DSLR base plate is because I did need the rails. Uh, for a follow focus so you can see that this uh, Photaga uh, follow focus is attached to the rails on the Zacuto uh, plate. And I've gotten a couple of emails at, of people asking me about the matte box. I went with a Genis matte box. Uh, and the reason I liked it is because it doesn't have to use a rail system to attach to the camera. What it does is it uses adapting plates. So you can see here, this is the adapter ring from Genis uh, for this Canon lens, 77 millimeter. So you just screw the adapter onto the lens on the, through the filter threads. And then the matte box just pops right onto the adapter. There's a set screw here in the back, a thumb screw. You just tighten it down with your thumb, level it off. And then you have a nice uh, matte box that's directly attached to the lens, not to the rig. So if you want to go handheld, light, without having a big rail system to lug around, you can do it with this mailbox, uh, this matte box. One thing uh, about it though, it's a single stage matte box, so you can only put one filter in at a time. You can't stack filters on this. And it does come with a flag for the top. I have it off right now because the flag tends to block the microphone. And so unless I need the flag for any given purpose, I leave it off. And it only has the top flag, and it doesn't have uh, side flags. But I like it a lot. I, for what its purpose is, it serves me just fine. So that's the system. It works very well with the Canon 5D. Um, if you need any other information about it, you can contact me over here at YouTube, and I'll get an answer out to you the best I can. But um, try it. If there's a way you can try this microphone before buying it, it's uh, just about $800 for the mic. So if you can borrow it from somebody, try it and see what you think. It's very rich um, stereo background noise. It, it does a nice recording, much better than a camera mic, that's for sure. And uh, because it's stereo, it's, it's relatively small footprint. It's uh, easy to, to carry around.